Okay, Dr. Anni Tawil uh, merupakan associate professor di UKM, uh, master trainer of critical thinking, trainer of social enterprise, department principal advisor of Unipad UKM, uh, juga merupakan uh, telah terlibat uh, dalam bidang entrepreneurship uh, since 2012, locally and globally telah menghasilkan lebih empat buah buku entrepreneurship dan juga lebih lima modul entrepreneurship dalam pelbagai bidang. Okey, so tanpa membuang masa, uh, saya silakan uh, Dr. Ani Tawil. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Assalamualaikum semua. Uh, saya apa nak ucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada Uh, FMC sebab uh, sudi jemput saya untuk uh, borak santai lah saya consider is borak santai saja pada hari ini where kita um, apa ni kita just nak kongsi saja I believe that those yang in here adalah memang dah entrepreneur pun and I believe also the topic yang FMC dah beri ni macam-macam yang lebih heavy lagi berbanding dengan topik pada hari ni yang saya just nak kongsi sembang-sembang saja dengan uh, peserta uh, and usahawan sama ada you memang usahawan yang dah berjaya, usahawan yang sedang nak menempa kejayaan ataupun usahawan yang startup sahaja. So we're gonna uh, Mix lah eh, whether it's in English or in Malay, it's okay kan semua orang? I can see that uh, Okay Okay, Malisa guys, to text please Ada Hi uh, Dr. Ani Hi, 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 hi ha. uh, I dah sempat nak tengok you punya soalan Okay, um, so basically kalau kita cakap pasal entrepreneur traits ni Uh, there are argument whether the entrepreneur ni dilahirkan are they born as entrepreneur or are they polish as an entrepreneur so basically kalau kita cakap tentang entrepreneurs ni everybody is an entrepreneur sebab uh, the moment kita masuk dalam perut mak kita tu uh, daripada ayah kita kepada mak kita pun kita dah entrepreneur because entrepreneur really need to be a resilient person sebenarnya Cuma nya kepercayaan kita tentang diri kita lah to be an entrepreneur tu macam mana kan. So I ada satu je slide. Uh, Miss uh, Mahani can you go to the other slides? The next slide. Okay. So I tak banyak nak 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 ulas macam-macam tentang uh, what is actually entrepreneur entrepreneur traits. When we talk about entrepreneur traits dalam bahasa Melayu is jati diri keusahawanan kan. When we want to talk about jati diri keusahawanan is in within ourselves. Yes, ada orang memang uh, from daripada kecil we can see we have our friends yang from the uh, from sekolah tadika lagi keep on selling this and that. So entrepreneur is about, kalau dalam bahasa Melayu tu perkataan ni adalah usahawan. Are a person that never stop of doing good things and never afraid of failure. Itulah seorang usahawan. So we talk about successful entrepreneur, entrepreneurial traits. The number one is the Passion by the DD day. If you look at the slides that I give you, there are 10. Okay, basically 10. Yang uh, usahawan ni kena ada dalam diri dia to make sure that they can be a successful entrepreneur. So of course, number one is the passion. Passion ni, those who have this entrepreneurial characteristic, they have this a very big passion in themselves. They look at things, even though people look at it as a problem or something yang buruk ataupun something yang masalah, but the passion in this entrepreneur will give them a different view or angle. Dia nampak benda tu berbeza. Even an entrepreneur, sometimes there are entrepreneurs looking for rejection. Why? Because when they have this rejection, they will find how to overcome that rejection and everything come from passion because passion is come from yourself it's inside it's inner your inner your inner strength is the passion of what you want to do 
You want, um, uh, and then you can see that an entrepreneur, they are not stopped at only one kind of business. So entrepreneur, we look into many, many things. And during me, and if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, walaupun, okay, contoh lah. Sekarang ni kita ada COVID-19 yang melanda satu dunia which is um, telah menyebabkan ada banyak perniagaan yang merudung tetapi ada banyak juga perniagaan yang mula tumbuh. Dan kita rasa orang yang ada passion ni, orang yang memang ingin melakukan uh, yang memang ada dalam diri dia tu, dia akan keluar daripada kepompong apa saja. Mereka ni, when you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you definitely kena ada perasaan yang yes, you akan ada hari yang you flop, jatuh entah ke mana. You akan ada hari yang you rasa depressed. But you will definitely feel that you akan bangun juga. You tak akan boleh tidur dengan lena hanya untuk memikir kenapa aku jatuh. An entrepreneur with their passion, dia boleh sustain because they will always think that kalau dia duduk dalam gua yang sangat-sangat sangat gelap pun, they will definitely can find the lights as any wall kat kiri kan ada. That is the passion yang mereka ada. And then when we talk about flexibility. Flexibility An entrepreneur ni dia bukan uh, entrepreneur yang berjaya ni they will not restrict their time only at office hour 8 to 5 in example so they have this flexibility uh, to do their work at any time at any place and then now kalau kita tengok the new terms of entrepreneurs are uh, a new norm and also a new term is the gig economies gigers So gig economies are now kalau kita tengok because of the covid we have lesser face to face so we have like more online like apa yang kita sedang buat sekarang what FMC is doing now we have this online webinar studies where before this kalau kita nak pergi kursus definitely the course is hello We hear you, we hear you. Doc. Okay, okay, okay. Because tadi ada phone call masuk, I takut dah terhilang dengan you all. So, we talk about flexibility. Kita, uh, and a successful entrepreneur, they don't really count their time. If you have any question, you can drop at uh, chat so I can respond on that. But, uh, kita, I baca je lalu whatever yang I rasa nak cakap kan. So, they have this flexibility. They are uh, successful entrepreneur. Especially the CEO, very lastly, because their direction is clear or kalau tak clear pun dia akan clear kan. So that is an entrepreneur trait, successful entrepreneur where flexibility dia tak akan like, oh, I hanya boleh jumpa dengan you waktu ni, waktu ni sahaja. They will make time. That is an entrepreneur. And also flexibility not only about time, but also flexibility in terms of uh, process, in terms of product in terms of design. So dekat situ daripada flexibility of uh, conducting things, conducting themselves, time management dan sebagainya, they have lots of flexibility dekat mana nak buat, dia tidak uh, restrict at one time, one places only but they will go beyond that uh, flexibility. Tadi dah passion kan, you have that passion inside you. And also you akan sentiasa berfikir like macam uh, because I know Liz dekat sini, She is doing, I think, Lisa, are you doing unit trust or whatsoever? So she will always, 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 always think ahead like how to uh, do her business, which people, who is her target market, what type of people yang you nak tawarkan, you need to understand that. So flexibility is not only about time, flexibility about how do you manage to meet people. Bila you jumpa orang A, The character is like this. When you jumpa orang B, the character is like this. So you tak akan jadi seorang yang stereotype, only one type of person. Flexibility means you can adapt and adopt uh, accordingly to the situation that you are facing at that time. So 
Itulah tadi daripada passion from yourself. So bila you passion, you definitely akan come up with flexibility where you tidak restrict diri you untuk satu-satu perkara and you will not definitely restrict diri you untuk satu-satu perniagaan sahaja. There are types of entrepreneur that look into many many businesses. There are also uh, entrepreneur that only do one business but when you do one business you have flexibility in doing it in many many ways. Okay and then look at from that flexibility we go into creativity. So of course when we talk about entrepreneur what makes you different from a businessman is because you always wants to innovate or you always wants to enhance or you always wants to have your value proposition or unique selling proposition which is what which make you different from other people so to make yourself different definitely it needs you to be creative so creativity is important for an entrepreneur to be success to make sure that why are you different let's look into the business of Grab or Uber, when they want to start this business of um, online platform of uh, logistic, on people logistic kan. So dulu-dulu bila kita tengok, kita akan naik bus ataupun kita go for taxi and kita tak ada flexibility ataupun kita tak ada satu uh, certainty on bila you naik this taxi, uh, the price adalah sama ataupun price tu berubah-ubah. So when you go for and then you definitely kena beratur dekat tempat taxi or you need to call the taxi. But when they start Uber and Grab, we can see that the different, that is different because you book the car online. Okay. And now the Grab, kalau dekat Malaysia sekarang we, we have like many things kan Grab. But Grab yang paling popular lah yang kita nampak. So Grab mula-mula dulu dia hanya buat untuk uh, perjalanan sahaja but now Grab dah different, dah jadi ada Grab food and now because of Covid, it has boom in terms of logistic via online because of the Covid, we are, we are now in new norm so we can see that there are lots lots of um, do you call it rider? Rider yang hantar barang dan sebagainya We have Grab, kita ada Boom Cosset, kita ada Lalamo, kita ada banyak There are lots of choices and For them to compete to each other Okay now, dulu kita memang dalam fasa Covid that everybody is Only have, that is the choice yang kita ada Order food and food come from the uh, rider, okay, kita pakai rider kan But now bila kita dah mula kepada PKPP Where we can go to the restaurant and people still enjoy Go to the restaurant, hangover, talking to each other So this business of Lala Mo, Bungkosit, Grab Food, uh, Panda, Food Panda and so on They need to think creatively, how can they survive after this? Where can they put all the riders? Because, uh, yeah, this, there are still people will continue order online but remember when the kedai restaurant dah open, people akan, akan berkurangan. The order will be berkurangan. What happened to this rider? What happened to the company? Will the company tutup or what can they do? What can they make them different? So creativity is very important for the entrepreneur in their trades for, so that they can um, understand or they will look into what is actually the market needs now. So creativity is very important. Itu kita cakap tentang produk ataupun service mereka iaitu rider, hantar food, order food dan sebagainya. Yes, before this in COVID memang tak cukup tangan dan kaki. But now bila COVID dah semakin uh, berkurang, what happened? Okay, will it be different or will it be the same? So kalau before this, the product not only about food but also online business but now people dah start pergi kepada uh, mall dan sebagainya. What about this? How can they be different? Okay, so and then we need to be an open-minded. So when you are an entrepreneur, critics will always come in, will be pouring to you not only critics but also ideas will come to you 
So as an entrepreneur, you need to be an open-minded person. To be an open-minded person, the number one that you need to have is the smile. You cannot boldly smile at any situation, pada apa-apa keadaan sekalipun. Even though you kena maki hamon, you need to smile. Because why? When you smile, you will have this uh, positive values in you. Your aura of positive akan keluar. And with that, you know what? What's the difference of open-minded and closed-minded? What is the what is the effect when you dengar critics? In example, when you are an entrepreneur, you bukan sahaja do the selling, but do are also sell your ideas, right? So when you want to get investor, in example, or when you want to get funder, in example, or if you want to get to know to do the market research to understand what is the people view, what they want. Yeah, so you need to be an open-minded person. You need to be a person that can accept ideas, uh, accept critics. Okay, if you are close-minded, you will uh, you build a wall around you. When you build a wall around you, you dah tak dengar dah apa yang orang cakap. Yang you dengar adalah complaint. Listening to a complaint in a complaint mode. And compared to listening to a complaint or comment as a suggestion mode will make you uh, menerima or accept that kind of ideas differently. If you have that close-minded that you dengar semua tu as a critics and you dengar semua tu as a comment or you dengar benda tu as a complaint and you dengar benda tu as a negative vibes in you, you tak nampak jalan. You tak nampak jalan and you will uh, terhalang. You akan rasa macam ada tembok yang yang naik dekat depan you yang menyebabkan you uh, tak rasa benda tu satu yang positif. When that's happen to you, dia akan menyebabkan you rasa lemah. You akan rasa uh, I cannot go or you akan rasa diri you bodoh dan sebagainya. But I believe all of you here are an entrepreneur already have this positive mindset positive mindset from the open-minded mindset, you will listen to a command or complaint or critics as a positive value. When you listen as positive value, you will think different. You will see things clearly. You will see things differently. You tak nampak macam kabus hitam yang you tak nampak apa-apa. But when you, you have this open-minded, you have this positive aura in you, you have this positive a way of thinking, you will see it differently. Contoh, kalau kita kata sekarang ni pasal sekarang musim durian kan? There are many, many, many durians and durian ni dia ada macam-macam durian kan? So durian dekat Malaysia ni ada uh, D24, you have this uh, musang king, you have durian kampung, duri hitam, uh, apa lagi? IOI, there are so many. But when we talk about durian, Dah ada satu lagi kan, durian yang, apa yang terhasil daripada durian. So, uh, sorry tergolik tadi pun. So, apa yang terhasil adalah um, tempoyak kan. So, tempoyak, biasa kalau kita tengok orang yang jual, tempoyak tu dalam botol je. Yang dibuat secara manual. What will happen to, banyak, there's so many durian yang rosak, hanya jadi tempoyak macam tu. How do we commercial that tempoyak? How do we make sure that that tempoyak can last long and what can we do with that tempoyak besides of orang masak jadi uh, paten tempoyak ke, masak lemak tempoyak ke, what else? What can we do? So maybe from that open-minded orang cerita-cerita-cerita, thinking berfikir dia come balik kepada kreativiti tadi, dia boleh jadi something yang good about tempoyak. Okay, and then an entrepreneur ni, dia mesti kena ada vision. Vision ni, we can check up pasal vision. Vision is about eyes. When we talk about vision kan, VC, masa, mata kita tengok apa. Your vision must be clear. An entrepreneur, the vision must be clear. Not only for you, but also for your staff. 
for everybody that involved with you. Because vision ni adalah what is your goal kat depan tu. Dalam masa lima, enam tahun ke mana you nak? You nak jadi apa? So bila you dah tahu vision you, you nak jadi apa? Pengeluar tempoyak terbesar di Asia Tenggara misalnya. So you will connect with how many durian, uh, dusun durian, orchard yang ada. How many supplier durian yang macam mana you nak connect dengan all those Uh, pengedar-pengedar durian yang akan ada problem dengan durian-durian yang busuk. What can we do? So daripada situ, maybe it will come into uh, R&D. How to make sure that that tempoyak will still feel uh, rasa fresh, sedap dan masih ada manis-manis just because tempoyak ni dia makin lama dia dah hilang manis. So vision must be clear. Why your vision must be clear dalam uh, as a good entrepreneur ni bila you ada vision yang clear your staff, your people, faham? So everybody berada di Sirotul Mustaqim. Jalan yang lurus. Okay, kita ada jalan yang sama. Pandangan yang sama. Hala tuju yang sama. Jadi, kita akan bersama-sama dalam team untuk uh, mendapatkan, mencapai vision kita tu dalam tempoh yang kita dah setapkan tu bersama-sama. Kita tak akan ada Kontradik antara satu sama lain. So it's important that yes. Ada orang nak tanya soalan ke? Tak ada. Okay. So <coughs> itu adalah vision. So be clear. Now kita go into competitiveness. <coughs> competitiveness means you really need to understand the market situation. So kita boleh panggil sebagai market driven. We need to understand. So kita nak uh, competitiveness, kita memang boleh compete. Kita bukan setakat tiru, copy je apa yang orang buat. Imitate je orang buat. Biasanya kalau yang imitate ni dia tak akan lama. So kalau kita tengok contoh iPhone dengan Samsung lah yang paling suka kita nak bagi contoh kan. They will always, always, always come out with a new product. So kalau kita tengok um, iPhone dah sampai mana? iPhone 11 dah sekarang. Tu dah masuk iPhone berapa dah tak tahu dah. Saya dah tak tahu dah iPhone berapa. Sebab asyik keluar yang baru kan. Samsung pun dah keluar yang baru yang boleh lipat kan. So always competitive supaya you are ahead in the market. You make sure that you are different in the market. Tapi tak adalah different sangat sampai you jadi macam robotik ke tak? You are slightly different. You are still relevant in the market. So that is important when you nak jadi uh, usahawan yang berjaya. You always need to look into why I nak jadi different. I suka nak share tentang uh, frozen frozen roti canai Tisha because I work dengan dia I pernah lah bagi talk dengan dia sekali. So I see like macam Tisha, they always have new product. Daripada hanya roti canai, kepada roti puri, lepas tu murtabak, lots of things that they they do. So and then they have go global. So kita tengok, so you need to be competitive in the market to ensure that you are different but not too different. Okay? You are different but not too different. The market is still that. The market wants it. So you need to understand the people. So you need to look at your competitor, you need to do a little bit of competitor analysis. So how can you be a number one? So kalau dulu untuk saya ya, I will go into uh, frozen roti cana or parata kawan ku. That is my choice before. But now when I have Tisha, I can see like Tisha is moving to yang cepat. Cepat dia, dia bertambah produk dia dan sebagainya. And dia dah ada dekat merata-rata, dekat giant dan sebagainya. So competitiveness is very important. But for you to have that competitiveness, you before this that kita kena ada creativity, open-minded, look at what people suggestion, vision kita nak sampai ke mana. You need to have strong people skills. Strong people skills mean you can handle the people. Your team, your staff, your logistic, that is important. Yang saya sebut tadi, strong people skills antaranya always smile. Tak kira lah keadaan macam mana pun, you will smile. Sentiasa senyum. Walaupun dalam keadaan sedang terseksa. And kalau kita tengok 
strong people skill ni kalau you go for uh, carnival is an example kan kadang sampai tak tidur so how do you manage your people to ensure that they are satisfied with what you are giving them how you manage them when you do entrepreneurship there are lots lots of rejection there are lots lots of your your team or your staff yang terpelek oh, how do you manage to handle them how walaupun you sendiri dalam keadaan terpelek oh, walaupun you sendiri dalam keadaan yang tertekan but how do you make sure that your team feel that they are safe that they are secured you tak boleh lah oh, kalau your team rasa terpelek oh you pula nak cerita ke terpelek on tan you when you talk about it you akan menyebabkan dia orang rasa unsecured when they feel unsecured they might leave you. They will see that your leadership is not there. So to be an entrepreneur, definitely you you need to have this leadership characteristic. So this leadership characteristic is that a strong people uh, skills that you need to have. So I said to up young managing people is the most difficult things to do in this whole world. Okay, because why? Managing people is managing about the skills, managing about the feeling, managing about their emotion. You need to be empathy, sympathy, which one? So you need to understand. You need to understand the, the, the process. You need to understand kalau dia macam ni, macam mana? You tak boleh like susuka hati nak marah dia, nak tengking dia dan sebagainya. Orang sekarang ni lagi lah sebab benda nak viral kan. So you really need to to go into that um, specifically on strong people skills to very very important. Sabar sangat penting. Creative. Tadi kita kata creative tentang produk. But now creative in managing people. Let's say you have this uh, staff yang susah nak bangun tidur. Dia akan bangun lewat dan tak tidur malam. Are you, do you want them to come? Do you want to sakitkan jantung you dengan kenapa dia tak datang awal? Or you might be give them kerja yang di waktu malam. Atau macam mana you nak sesuaikan? Or we can say now kita go into talent management. How do we manage their talent? Not lagi necessarily through what is their certificate that they have. But what is actually their talent that can uh, not stop you from uh, jaga dia dalam masa yang sama dia juga akan give back to you. So it's important for you to manage this kind of people dan juga staff-staff yang elok, yang baik. Macam mana you want to do? Itu belum lagi to manage your supplier to manage your agent, that is all under strong people skills. Strong people skills in terms of how do you manage to make sure that they are satisfied with you. Okay, there are some situation yang I nak share dekat sini as an, a good entrepreneur. Kadang-kadang orang boleh fitnah kita kan. Entrepreneur dekat Malaysia ni bukanlah satu benda yang mudah nak buat. Fitnah kadang-kadang sampai kepada tahap um, apa sihir dan sebagainya kan tapi I tak nak go into that lah into sihir because we cannot see that and you can even cannot report or take action on that but how do you uh, handle this situation like I go back into Tisha Tisha ni dia ada kisah dia dengan family business before that and dia kena tukar nama daripada brand lain kepada brand Tisha. So you need to understand what is in the legal terms yang you boleh guna to solve any problem that you have regarding your business and manage not in anger mood but in a professional manner then you can go into a very strong people skills and you will not develop that one night. Okay, so you need to Read, you need to read a lot, go to courses kalau ada. Please, please, yeah, entrepreneur, do not uh, kedekut masa to go to a good courses. That will lead you into a very good quality of entrepreneur. Same goes to your people, okay? So your people, strong people skills, again, you can also send them to courses so that they can be a better 
team for you, think for you, and lead your uh, project or business into a good business. Okay. And then, of course, when we talk about determination, it will relate into patient. Determination means you, when you determine to do, you believe in you. That is, even though you have this open-minded to listen to the critics, to listen to the comment, uh, to go into uh, ambil orang punya idea, tetapi an entrepreneur, determination dia ialah if they want to do this thing, they believe that they can do this thing. Kalau kita tengok macam contoh Elon Musk kan, when he wants to, apa, dia sekarang kan buat yang orang boleh book untuk duduk dekat mana, dekat marih, dekat bulan. Of course, orang akan kata dia gila, right? When he started his business, dia buat pasal pelancaran roket dan roket dia meletup, meletup dan sebagainya. But he is not stuck. So, an entrepreneur, have this determination yang akan bawa dia beyond imagination ya yeah? beyond imagination kita tak peduli apa orang nak cakap if dia rasa betul 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 they will go for that you can see the characteristic of determination in entrepreneur ni kalau dia rasa dia nak buat with the vision tadi definitely they will try to get and determination ni juga ada related dengan the power of law of attraction law of attraction ni i nak sentuh sikit Basically sebenarnya law of attraction ni is what is inside you yang you fikir akan jadi yang hari-hari you fikir akan jadi benda tu lah yang akan jadi. So when we talk about law of attraction, when we talk about determination, bila kita dah determine kita nak buat benda ni kita akan buat. Kita mesti buat sampai jadi. Sebab sebab uh, kita kita sebab apa sebab kita dah tahu dah kita nak buat itulah law of attraction kita tahu kita nak buat kita nak buat kita nak, kita nak jadi benda tu kita nak buat benda tu kita nak buat benda tu dan kita jangan uh, cepat mengalah dan kita kena teruskan apa yang kita nak dan kita kena cari jalan i can see a question tadi macam mana I nak tengok question lah okay uh, okay for entrepreneurs is eq more important than iq where does sq fit in so I believe when you are an entrepreneur, your EQ, your IQ, IQ of course, like everybody have IQ, but different, different of IQ. But EQ is important because you can suit yourself at any situation when you have this, you can control your EQ. Okay. So I'm sorry about the SQ. I'm not familiar with SQ. Can the, que the person that asked the question drop the meaning of SQ here? Yep, it oh, spiritual. Spiritual only is yourself, can your EQ only is for you to understand others. So as an entrepreneur, definitely if we talk about critical thinking or if we talk about design, design thinking, when you talk about design thinking, you will always want to fulfill what the people need. So that is EQ, your, your empathy. Kan? So you want to understand them, then you can serve what they want. Spiritual is more into yourself. When we go into the entrepreneurial Trade study, your open-minded is your SQ, your passion is your SQ, your resilience is also your SQ, and your vision, your strong people skills is also your SQ. So you understand, you tak akan cepat mengalah with that. Okay? So I hope I, I jawab lah soalan tu. Okay? Alright. Now I nak your determination is also related to your SQ, your spiritual, your, your, your own, your sendiri. Your resilience is also your spirit. Your spirit, macam mana you nak handle the people? Macam mana you nak handle the critics? Macam mana you nak handle your business jatuh? Macam mana you nak change from one business to another business? Kalau the business that you think can success tapi tak success. So, 
that is the thing yang you kena letak kat diri you. Yang kalau saya sebutkan tentang the power of attraction, the law of attraction tadi, that is also your SQ. Macam mana you believe, you percaya yang you boleh buat benda tu. Macam mana you percaya you boleh bangun. I can see that many entrepreneurs when they fail in uh, one particular business, definitely dia tak akan immediately tukar yang lain. Tetapi dia tak akan berhenti menjadi seorang usahawan. Kata usaha tu pun akan reflect pada diri dia yang akan sentiasa nak buat sesuatu yang baru. So dekat situ SQ dia memang penting untuk dia nak jadi seorang yang apa yang dia nak buat. And then when we talk about strong people skills, that is your EQ. When you want to talk about what people need dekat luar sana, that is your EQ. When you talk about IQ, that is your creativity. That is your ideation. That is your IQ. Okay? And as an entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur, resilience memang kena ada dalam diri you. Kalau tak, it's not easy for you to be in the market. You can see that kalau you, okay, entrepreneur ada dua kan. Satu entrepreneur yang, yang keluarkan benda yang totally new, yang you kena do the R&D, yang you kena fikirkan from A to Z, yang you kena memahamkan manusia, yang you kena buat all the process of commercialization. You need to go into what is the ideation stage, you then you go for the prototyping stage, testing stage, sampailah keluar. Okay, that is one entrepreneur. And then the other type is just copy, tukar sikit and jadikan benda yang baru. So, resilience for you is very important untuk you be in the market. Okay, supaya you tak cepat jatuh terduduk. And entrepreneur ni kalau kita boleh gambarkan, belakang dia ni penuh dengan tembakkan okey tetapi dia akan tetap boleh berjalan itulah entrepreneur they will not stop they will go forward kalau dia fail sampai kat jalan mati dia tak akan bunuh diri okey tetapi dia akan duduk fikir balik macam mana dia nak dapatkan kekuatan yang baru macam mana dia nak tukar sikit ke or change ke So itu akan menyebabkan dia setiap dia akan berada di dalam market yang berterusan. And we know that it's not easy ya. Eh? Okay macam I know this one guy yang jual keripik bawang. Last time bila dia buat keripik bawang is only on hari raya. But now I can see after like I think five years I kenal dia. Her keripik, his keripik bawang now ada dekat Petronas and people Makan all over the year, not only on that particular event. Itu itu bisnes yang kecil. I know there are lots more bisnes yang besar-besar. Like kalau kita tengok uh, Proton, sekarang dah keluarkan X70 yang kereta dia dah memang different kan daripada mula-mula tahun 1984, masa mula-mula kereta Proton keluar. So that is how kita nak make sure that kita ada kita boleh resilience kita kita tahan kat situ walaupun CEO berubah-ubah what we trade it as a business definitely you kena make sure that you can still be in the market okay and the last actually there are many many traits of a successful entrepreneur but i take this only 10 so that kita boleh pick this is the best for you to have strong work ethic strong work ethic means The owner or the entrepreneur, definitely you kena tahu how to manage your business, what kind of documentation that you need to do. If you need to be a strong work ethics, termasuklah kalau you punya meeting at what time, you kena ada pada pukul berapa, you tidak melewat-lewatkan masa. That is the thing yang important yang you kena faham. Yang kadang-kadang kalau kita tengok, New generation, kadang-kadang benda tu tak dapat Please. fulfill. Ya, yeah, lawyer. Ada suara ke? Yep. So, uh, when we talk about uh, strong work ethics, you know where to go. You link with the agencies that can help you. You are not alone. Uh, kalau you company besar, Sometimes you just take the uh, ideas from company kecil but 
please jangan jangan uh, apa jangan Anaya mereka. If you want to buy the company, buy the company. Give them good price. So kalau company kecil pula, you kena go into um, what? Fikir benda yang out of the box. Dokumentkan betul-betul and in fact kita ada like venture capital yang can think about who's going to take this business after this. So maybe sometimes you have good ideas but you don't have enough capital to go beyond uh, apa yang you nak. But there are companies that can help you in terms of make it a reality, make it go beyond. And so you need to decide whether you are the creator or you uh, you want to be successful from zero to hero or you want to come up with new ideas but people can take from you or there are many, 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 many uh, version to be an entrepreneur. So be strong as, as an entrepreneur. This is 10 that I can share with you. There are many more, but the most important when we talk about entrepreneur is the patient in you, the determination in you, and also the resilience. That is the most important that will make you sustain and will make you relevant in the market. So I think that is the thing that I want to share with all of you. So you can freely ask questions or share your own thoughts about it together with other participants here. Okay, thank you Dr. Ani. Okay, uh, ada ada question kat sini. Uh, this hmm? one dia PM private dekat saya. Uh -huh. What if entrepreneurs just have some of the traits? Can other uh -huh. traits be learned and how? But macam mana? Soalan tu sebelah. What if entrepreneurs just have some of the traits? Ah. Oh. Can other traits be learned and how? Of course. Of course it can be learned. Takkanlah you lahir-lahir je terus you have that all those traits. But you, number one, learn from experience. Can? From experience. Number two, there are lots of agencies that give you training, knowledge to do this. Macam like FMC buat sekarang Or kita ada InScan, Institute Keusahawanan Negara But we have many agency like Magic We have lots so you need to go to learn new things Kadang-kadang dia tajuk sama Sajuk sama And then you kadang-kadang tengok isi pun sangat lebih kurang sama Tapi you can see that the experience from the speakers We make it different Dia ada je benda-benda extra yang ada pada that speakers Yang can be a new knowledge to you Okay, but the most important is when you come to this uh, training and example, then you see, oh, I don't have this trait. I don't have this trait. Where can I get more? So learn. You can learn from books. You can learn from internet. You can learn from experience. You can learn from going to courses. Okay, make sure that you always hunger for new knowledge. Because new knowledge will make sure, will make you a relevance in the market, will make you resilience in the business, and it can show you where to go. And in fact, when you go to courses like this, you have someone to refer to when you dekat a dead end, when you are dekat buntu, you tak tahu. How do you go beyond this? How do you go international? How do you go export dan sebagainya? And then, and also one more thing for an entrepreneur to me, is also important for you to be in association. Go! Stay, be in an association. Bila ada meeting, you go and then you can learn from their stories. Macam I, I am not an entrepreneur, definitely not. But I am engaged with an entrepreneur. So entrepreneur story is my story. Same goes to you. Their experience can be your experience. You can learn from them. And you can take their traits and learn how to get that traits. So engage with people, go to courses, be in association, pergi kursus-kursus supaya you get new friends and also networking. When we go to, macam ni kan, bila kita buat online business ni, uh, online courses ni, satu lah kekurangan dia, we are not interact with each other. When we not interact with each other, it's not that easy for us to make the linkages. But if you have an opportunity to go to face-to-face, -face, because sekarang face-to-face dah allow kan, go to face-to-face -face courses and make networking, bring your name card everywhere, 
kalau you boleh ada sample-sample produk you, you boleh bawa or if you have leaflet bawa That is determination. When you bring your leaflet, when you show your website, that is also determination to show people how to, how you want to market, how how you want to make people see you, or how you can you make yourself visible. Uh, this is go back into pitching techniques. So pitching techniques like one saat satu minit ke you dah boleh nampak, orang boleh nampak, you boleh terus ting, I want to talk more with you. So go back to the traits. Tricks, yes, kita sebenarnya benda tu ada dekat diri kita but how do we sharpen that? How do we polish supaya dia jadi sesuatu yang bermanfaat? Ha, itu yang kita kena belajar. Macam lah, you, you datang hari ni, bila I cakap. Bila I cakap, you can say, oh I patut ada lah. Oh I already have it but I tak sedar pun. So it's important for you to listen from those yang experience, for, from the mentor from reading. Tapi cuma reading kan kita tak boleh nak tanya kan. Uh, so it's important for you to go to courses for you to sharpen. Jangan kena code masa. Jangan kena code uh, duit for you untuk um, mendapatkan ilmu. Okay. Okay ada satu lagi soalan. Uh, how to be determined but not desperate during networking? During networking. Ah. Uh. Desperate ni apa? Desperate ni maksudnya you macam force orang ke? Siapa yang tanya soalan ni? Suraini eh? Suraini boleh dengar suara you tak? Boleh tak nak tengok muka you? Where are you? Suraini? Suara you? Suraini? Hello? 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 Puan? Puan Suraini, do you mean that desperate means macam like you macam rasa you memaksa orang ke? Okay, I, I, I... Sebab dia tak respon. Ah, tak apa, tak apa. I, I, ni je lah. I elaborate through my understanding, ya. Yeah? Your question tadi, maksudnya you tanya, how do we determine but not desperate with the networking? Maksudnya kita, yang pertama you kena faham, who is, what is your target market. Kenapa you kena do this networking? There are two situation when you want to do networking. Number one, your aim networking. Aim networking means you dah memang senarai. Oh, this is my networking yang I perlu. This is the, the why I perlu dia ni, why I perlu dia tu, why I perlu dia ni. Maybe dia ni I punya supplier, maybe dia ni uh, potential to be my agent or maybe dia ni a potential for me to collaborate or maybe dia ni potential to be my funder or my investor. So yang itu adalah you dah listkan your uh, your networking kan itu maksudnya kita determine oh this is the person yang kena jumpa ni this is the person yang ni kenapa 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 apa and kita try to engage and try to find oh kat mana kita jumpa dia but there are also a situation where you dah ada dalam that that function or that event or that meeting as soon as you see this person and you know that uh, this is their role So you kena tengok balik the list of determine why you kena jumpa orang ni kan. So uh, you tidaklah jadi macam desperately nak force dia because actually when you have that determine, when you determine, you dah clear path apa yang you you buat kan. Then bila you uh, dah clear apa yang you buat menyebabkan you, you 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 tahu why you need them. Okay. But kadang-kadang, there are some networking that just masuk dekat you without you determine kenapa you perlu kan dia. But dia orang memberi you impact yang besar. So, again, when you want to do the networking, please. Satu, name card jangan lupa. Number two, when you have their name card, ask them can I WhatsApp you, WhatsApp them. Kalau boleh, you selfie dengan dia. Ada setengah orang kan suka cakap, ah, orang yang selfie ni adalah orang yang berpenyakit jiwa. No, don't don't look at it negatively. As entrepreneur ni kan, always look at it positively. So when you do selfie, when you do selfie, you whatsapp orang tu. You whatsapp dia, hi Datuk apa benda, I am, kalau I, I am Dr. Ani, we just talk just now, this is the photo of us and this is my name card. And I have, uh, so this is my Now dalam zaman online ni, you tulis dah sikit what is your what what is your role, what you do. So that is part of networking. Orang tak nampak desperate sebab kita dah, dah suruh tu aku untuk talk with you lah lah lah. But you do that as your network. You know what? Sending selfie to a WhatsApp from your new networking 
I learned this from someone that told me about Arwah Datuk Maznah, the Iron Lady. She said, this is how you make networking. This is how you sebenarnya menghormati your networking. Maksudnya, you tak just collect all the um, name card, simpan dalam bag, but you snap your photo, selfie with them, and send back to them. And they appreciate that. And maybe when you tulis itu, they kata, oh, what? Why don't you come here? You you know about pitching now. Eh? When we talk about pitching, kita cakap sikit je, but we want to get their time more after that. So, gunakan. Gunakan that. So, they can see that you are desperately not there, but you are determined. Oh, orang macam ni, what you want to do. Okay? And of course, kuasa doa lah. Jangan dilupakan. Okay? Oh, anything else? Alright. Anything else? Uh -uh. Ada siapa-siapa lagi nak tanya? Boleh unmute mic mungkin? Mm -mm. Okay, saya rasa dah tak ada lagi. Ah, okay. okay. Alright, okay. Thank you so much Dr. Ani. Uh, banyak sangat input yang uh, I boleh pick up eh hari ni. Uh, one of it mm. adalah. Okay. Entrepreneur need to smile at any situation. Yes. Uh, because when you smile, you change your mood. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, second, use legal ways or terms to solve any problem instead of acting on your emotion. Mm -mm. Okay. And then ada a few tips uh, from question yang ditanya tadi. One of it adalah networking punya tip. Uh, that, that one very very good. Uh, I pun tak pernah try lagi untuk selfie dengan my prospect. <laughs> Yeah, you need to do it now. Yes, 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 betul. Okay, alright. Okay, so uh, I rasa uh, tamat sudah sesi kita pada hari ini. Uh, thank you so much Dr. Ani for all the input. Kita ada uh, 10 traits, entrepreneur traits yang kita kena develop and kita kena improve if dah ada. So then insyaAllah kita boleh menjadi seorang usahawan yang berjaya. Okay? InsyaAllah. Alright, okay. Thank you, Dr. Ani. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. I hope it benefit everyone. Uh, maybe tak sempurna, but I think that is from my perspective and my view. I hope semua usahawan dalam ni akan berjaya insyaAllah. Okay. Amin. Right. Amin. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank okay. you so much for the participants. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.